Hey guys, welcome back to another whiteboard chat. Are you gonna wreck the car? <laughs> Today we are in the car, so we don't actually have a whiteboard. We're gonna go over my recent lab work, all right? So I, I did, I don't know if I did the last set, but I know I did the set before that. I do like to go over these, talk about some of the context and why, why some of the values might vary in certain contexts, you know, growth phase versus deficit versus, you know, whatever. First off, this lab work is roughly about four weeks into um, mini, five weeks, four or five weeks into like a mini cut cleanup type of period. Pretty, as you guys know, I'm pretty high in food. Um, obviously creates some inflammation and some insulin resistance for sure by the end of that. So this is kind of indicative of maybe getting almost where I need to be, but I do want to improve a couple things on here, which I'll talk about. So first off, this was a CMP, CBC, test free in total, A1C, uh, cortisol, AM cortisol, TSH, estradiol, insulin, and T3, I think free T3, but we'll look at that. First off, CMP looks really good. Glucose is at a 90 now. I was measuring about 88 to 8 to 90 at home. Now, I imagine that'll probably come down a few more points, probably come down around mid 80s, low 80s even, by the end of this, and that should put me about where I need to be. Bun and creatinine look good on here, so bun is a 19, creatinine is a 1.15, so those are both really good. Kidney filtration is an 85 for EGFR, which is pretty good for morning. You know, I might see it go up to like a 90 or 90, maybe even over 90 if I did like an afternoon if I hydrated all day. I had about 24 ounces of water in, so not a lot. And of course, all of that hadn't quite like hit my blood yet, but that's kind of where we were at. All the electrolyte numbers look good. I do, you know, generally don't see skews here, but I do look at sodium and potassium levels a lot and to look for uh, adrenal issues, especially myself. I tend to kind of get that adrenal insufficiency issues kind of easily if I'm not careful which would show a higher potassium and a lower sodium because of aldosterone levels and your screening sodium. So on here, pretty much middle of the range for both, really. So no issue there. I don't see a big deviation, kind of a ratio between those. Sometimes we'll see issues with phosphorus levels too. In that case, again, right in the middle. So that is pretty good. And I will go over the actual cortisol number Obviously, it's not a Dutch test, it's not a urine cortisol, but it's still helpful. Liver values, slight elevation in AST, it's a 43, range goes up to 40, not really a big deal. We know that's just training related. ALT is a 43, range goes to 44, so we're still in range. Pretty good liver enzymes for like a male bodybuilder in this kind of like weight and muscle range. It's, it's really difficult to get your liver enzymes in. If I were to take two or three days off, they would have been completely normal. Iron levels are good. HDL, LDL, cholesterol. LDL is at a 119 and HDL is at a 38. So they consider anything over 39 is kind of the range. You're going to see that improve as insulin sensitivity improves. Same with triglycerides. I'm out of 110, which isn't bad. But I, will, I should see you maybe even get my HDL to like a 40 or 41 probably. That's pretty good for me. That's genetically, I mean, that's about as high as I'm able to get it, no matter what. So I can probably get it up to about there before we start adding any type of food back in. LDL probably go down a couple ticks. Uh, I did have a calcium score of CT last year, less than a year ago, probably eight months ago, something like that. And that, and I had a zero. So you know, not oxidizing much, not having really any plaque build up, so I mean, we're all good there. Breast electrolyte, I mean, everything looks good there on the actual lipid profile. If you look at the CBC, white blood cells look pretty good. I do like to look at that if I start seeing white blood cells under range, I worry about some overtraining issues and some suppression because the body's beat up. Red blood cells, 5.81, range goes up to 5.8, so I'm literally 0.1, 0 0.01 over. I have to worry about hemoglobin, nicely in range, hematocrit in range. That's really good. A lot of people struggle with that. Those actually look really good. And for those of you who struggle, you know, looking into some of the ARBs and things that we've talked about on the podcast and talked about on some of the, the other whiteboard chats and videos, those can definitely be helpful. 
I do pay attention to MCV, MCH, RDW, those, and MCHC, those values, especially for B vitamin deficiencies, zinc deficiencies, and iron imbalances. So I do have a past history of B12 deficiency, which I fixed with methylated B12. And I am a bit of an under-methylator, so I supplement, and also zinc. Now, I have no issues, no deviations in any of those numbers. They look good. Platelets look good. All white blood cell counts look good. So not one single flag there. So I'm pretty happy with all of that. Testosterone, serum, this is on my prescribed TRT. And I'm at 897. That's 100 and, uh, 150 milligrams a week. And this would have been about two days post post administration so 48 hours or so so this should be you know higher up in the range it might be even a little bit higher if i were to do it like the day after but this is a pretty good average three tests in a good ratio three tests is also towards the higher end of the range hemoglobin a1c is 5.2 i would like to see that around a five or even a little bit lower even like a four nine or four eight now remember hemoglobin is kind of a a multiple three-ish month outlook. So some of that is actually tracing back into when I, my food was a lot higher, right? My blood sugar was probably, you know, I was a little more insulin resistant. So that's really not bad to be completely honest. It's showing that me towards the end of that phase, my average probably wasn't too bad. So that should improve, a, you know, a couple more tenths at least by the time we're done. Cortisol is a 10, pretty good. I you know, I wouldn't mind if it was like an 11, or a 12 even come up with just a tad. I don't, I'm not worried about a 10, I think that's fine. I'm gonna use some morphogen adaptogen for that, some of that granular, get my adrenal activity. A little, going a little bit more, but it's not bad. And also, I did this, did this test a little ways out from waking, so it wasn't giving me like my full peak either. So I might even be, you know, like an 11 or 12, realistically. TSH, uh, it's fine. You know, everything's good there, 1.2. Estradiol is a 23.8. You know, I'd really like to see that estradiol a little bit higher, to be honest, but I don't, I just don't aromatize that much. I mean, there's no, no supplementation or anything there in play. That's just the prescribed TRT, and that's just how much I aromatize, so it is not much. I would like to see it in 30s or 40s, but that's where we're at. Insulin level, 6.8. So I do expect that to come down. 6.8, again, not bad for this point at, you know, coming out of the phase and, and cleaning up. I'll get it down to a five, you know, five or even maybe a little below five, potentially. It should be in a nice spot. And three T3 is at a 4.3. So right at the top of the range, the range goes to 4.4. This was a moderately comprehensive lab. I didn't some things I didn't check, but I normally will start with this. And then if I need to do any follow-ups, I'll do them or every, you know, like two to three sets of labs, I'll do even more values. But pretty good idea. I've still done so many sets of lab works. Pretty good idea where everything's generally at. And yeah, everything was good. I, I assume another few weeks or give or take should pretty much put those uh, insulin values and the glucose values, A1C, all that pretty good range. Should bring that HDL up a couple more ticks. Should bring that LDL down a couple more ticks. Everything should be pretty good. We'll hang out there a little bit. I'm more than happy with this for where we're at. Like I said, did a calcium score CT last year. Did an echocardiogram last year. Everything was really good. Have an appointment with the doctor in a couple weeks. Go over everything, see if there's anything he wants to add. And that's pretty much it. That is it for labs this time. If you guys have any questions on anything, feel free to ask in the comments below. This is just the labs that I'm doing. I might suggest different things for different people. And again, context, context, context. Don't be worried if something is different than another time you check labs, because again, context makes a difference. Talk to you guys next time.